Well, good morning, everyone. How are we all doing? <clears throat> For my regular viewers, that is it. We are in Devon. Um, we got down here on Monday. It was a fair old drive from Great Yarmouth. It took six or so hours by the time we stopped, checked in. Um, all we pretty much done Monday night was going to have a couple of drinks in the clubhouse. Um, woke up yesterday morning, absolutely shattered. Absolutely. Obviously, I'd just come off nights and obviously what with the drive, absolutely shattered. So me, G and Jordan, we didn't really do much yesterday. We just had a bit of a chill day. Lee, Tubbs and Paul, they went to a beach just past Babacombe. Uh, they fished for a few hours, they caught absolutely nothing, <laughs> they caught zero. So our plan today is we're going to be fishing Princess Pier, I believe it's called, opposite the Princess Theatre House, which is actually on the main seafront bit in Torquay. Tackle shop opens at 9 o'clock, it's currently about half 8, something like that, so we're just getting our bits ready. We're going to go tackle shop, get some bait, we're going to get on the pier. The rest, of, they've gone down there already, the boys have already gone down, I think they're doing a bit of spinning down there, but we're going to meet up with them, grab some bait, get some fishing on the pier and let's just see what we can do today. We went for a walk down there last night just to suss it out and there was two guys fishing and I asked them both how they're getting on and both of them said they'd caught nothing. Um, so, but we'll see, we get down there and we will see what's happening. Right, see you down on Princess Pier, Torquay. Come on. Right, well here we are. So that in front of us is the Princess Theatre and that over there is Princess Pier. Um, Right, we've got the van, that is a good job, we've got the van. I mean, you think we've got our rods out for the pier fishing, and that's still the rest of us, that's Tubbsy and Grant and um, Lee and Paul, that's all still their rods in there. So that is why we brought the van down with us and then come down in the cars. Um, right, we just went to tackle shop, we've got a bit of bait in that, so right, let's start heading down that pier, let's see what we can do. Right, just arrived out, so we're on the Princess Pier. There's quite a few anglers down here already though. One, two, three, four, five, six up that way. There's another one, two, three, five, about six guys that way. And there's obviously there's six of us as well. We're gonna have to try and fit in. Uh, everyone's, most of the people on here, they're all using feathers from what we can see. They're just jigging and reeling in with feathers on there. Spoke to a couple of guys, um, but they were saying nothing has come out as yet. No one's caught anything, but. We'll see what we're doing. So I've got I two rods down, I've got a lightweight one here, and I've got my telescopic rod. I'm gonna get a little float fish on one and just throw a float down there. And then the other one I'm gonna put some feathers on, throw some feathers out and reel them. And we'll see how we get on. Well that's it, we're all set up ready for our first cast. Um, I'm just gonna start with the float fishing for now and see how we get on. I've put a, I'm not really an expert on the float fishing, so I'll just sort of put it together how I think it goes together. Um, I've put a stop knot bead up the top there. So the float will only go as high as that. And then from the float down to where my hook is, um, that'd be about five foot. Um, I think reading online, I said anywhere between sort of five and 10 feet depth for fishing off of here. So I'm at five foot, uh, Jordan set his one up. I think he's at about nine foot. So right, let's get this in the water, come on. Right, we're out there. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but my float is just out there. I'm like, I don't know what, 10 yards from the side, 15 yards from the side. All we'll do is watch that float and hope it goes straight under the water. Um, loads of little fish all swimming along the edges here. Tiny, tiny little, little fins. And then just now, I don't know what it was, but someone shouted something from up there. And apparently there was a big fish swimming along the edge there. So I'm not too sure what that was. Um, tide flow don't seem to be too quick because the float is just sort of sitting there. That's the thing like at home when we fish Galston Pier, that tide runs so quick. If you threw, threw, threw a float in on Galston Pier, within two minutes it'd be all the way like down there. This seems to be just sitting straight out in front of me, which is pretty handy. So yeah, all we do now is, uh, oh, look at that boat going out there. I'll tell you what, man, this marina, there are some boats out here, I'll tell you. We've got a marina bit right behind us. So when you're fishing Princess Pier, they say you can't fish this side. Anywhere off here, you can't fish in the marina. You're only allowed to fish casting out over to the side of the sea. But yeah, we'll leave this out for a few minutes, see what happens. I'll take a walk up in a bit, I'll go and speak to um, Lee and that lot, see how they're getting on up there, see what's happening. Yeah, see how we get on. Well, word has it that Lee had a mackerel, but he got off right on the end. Oh, you have... Nah, you're actually getting it up out of the water. 
G just pulled a crab in and I'll tell you what mate, it was like a crab on deadliest catch. This film was absolutely humongous. It was the size of a dinner plate, I kid you not. It was absolutely massive. What you got in there, lure or feathers? Uh, I've got a lure on the end of feathers. Oh, I've actually got your low, right, line of feathers and then lure on the bottom. And will the mackerel get on the feathers, yeah? Mackerel? On the bottom? Of the lure? No, no way. The second one. Yeah, well I'm float fishing, I'm about five, five foot just under the surface. Yeah, that's what they were saying. But I've got another rod down there. I might put a ledger on there and throw it out. How are you getting on, Paul? Any joy? Uh, no, it's just that little tiny pollock earlier. Yeah, well, you're ledgering, are you? Yeah, I am now, yeah. Yeah, I've got a float out there at the moment. A bit of float fishing. Sand and uh, that pollock and uh, some mackerel on the other. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, I've just got a bit of mackerel on there. A bit of float yeah, fishing. Yeah, but I might throw a ledger. I was just saying, G just pulled a crab in. Size of a dinner plate. I kid you not, this crab was absolutely humongous. Do's hope for the best in it and see what happens. You right there, Tubbsy? Yeah, yeah. Where's your rod, Tubbsy? Are you... Oh, you're ledgering as well, yeah? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's nice, man. That sun's warm. It's a bit of a breeze. We ain't going to realise how hot, like, hot the sun is when you get that breeze, do you? That's the only thing. Yeah, when we walked down here last night just to check it out, and it was a bit chilly down there. But yeah, I might set the uh, ledger rod up. There's been some mackerel coming out just a little bit further up, which is a good sign. Um, I was going to use this other rod. It's a bit lighter than a normal beach caster rod. It's got more of a delicate tip. And I was going to put a little spinning reel on there and just put some feathers on there and jig some feathers while the float's out there. Oh man, I've only brought one bloody little spinning reel with me. The only other reels I've got is in my big box. And the big beach casters. I can't put a big beach caster reel on, do you know what I mean? With a line of feathers. It's going to look ridiculous. Um, just checking with the boys, man. Yeah, all the spinning rods, reels they've got, they're using. Um, might be an excuse to go to the tackle shop later and buy a new spinning reel. <laughs> might be an excuse. No, I had to buy it, do you know what I mean? Might be an excuse to buy one. Um, like I say, but tomorrow, we are going beach fishing tomorrow. Chance of the guy in the tackle shop. I think he was saying Sapton Sands, Slapton Sands. I think he said it's about a 45 minute drive in that direction. But he said off the bass at the moment, on the bass off the beach at the moment, they're catching bass, there's conger eel, uh, bull husk coming out. So yeah, we're gonna be hitting the beach tomorrow. So it's just gonna be a nice chill day in there, do you know what I mean? Just sitting there on the pier, sun's out, floats out. Do you know what I mean? Just nice and relaxing, mate. Nice and relaxing. Oh geez, just pulled another one of these crabs out. Look at the size of it, man. He's got a little, little, uh, yeah, pinches on them. Pinches, isn't he? I wonder what they are. He's I don't a, know what names they are. It's a coral one. Yeah, I don't know. Looks like it's a coral crab. Definitely isn't a big it? boy, that's for sure. Rock. Well, we've been fishing down here now. Two hours we've been down here fishing, and it's absolutely dead. Absolutely ridiculous. And there must be, I don't know, 30, 40 anglers down here. There's got to be. There's got to be 30, 30, 40 people fishing. And all I've seen come out is that one mackerel down there. And like I say, Lee was onto a mackerel, but yeah, it come off as he was rearing it up. Other than that, that's the only fish we've seen. Absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, the guy in the tackle shop, he was saying about Slapton Sands. We've just had a look on Google Maps. Slapton Sands is an hour away from here. So yeah, we're debating. Um, our park, we've only got parking until two o'clock. So we've only got like a couple of hours left anyway. But what we're saying is we might, when we leave here, go back to the tackle shop, pick up some fresh lug, put that in the fridge tonight and we've got like a fresh worm for tomorrow then if we do go down the beach then we just ain't got mackerel and squid then we've actually got some worm baits as well um, also over there next to the tackle shop is a harvester so we're going to book a table for six tonight and that's where we are going for dinner tonight we are going harvester right it's going to be a short video but let's crack on with the fishing well we were just saying our pirate right now dead it is and absolutely nothing coming out and Lee has pulled himself out of mackerel He's, oh, he's a fair sized mackerel as well, Lee. Go for it. Oh, look, there's one for your species, aren't <laughs> He's a fair size, mate. Look at that. Nice, look at it well, man. Nice one, Lee. Wicked. Well done, mate. Blue, Wicked. Well, we were just saying, we're going to fish about another half hour. So I think we've done about three hours, three and a half hours, three hours. And like I say, apart from Lee getting out, um, he called out on a wedge. He had a, he's got feathers. And instead of putting a weight on the bottom, he's put a metal like, wedge on there, which he's using as the weight. And that's what the mackerel jumps onto, and the one that jumped off the hook earlier, that was on the metal wedge. So that's what I might do for the last half hour. I might just cut this where the swivel is, leave the float set up so I can set up for another time, 
and just tie a wedge on the bottom and just throw a wedge out for the last 15, 20 minutes. See if we can get something out that way. Right, that is it, we're done. We're just calling it the end of the day now. Leo that uh, mackerel out. I'll put a wedge on there for a while, spinning it in, nothing's coming out. Um, yeah, very quiet really. And like I say, I have all these fishermen, I think Lee and a guy down there, they're the only two people I've seen put a fish out. So yeah, we're gonna take the rods today back to the van. We're gonna walk around to the tackle shop, get some fresh lug for tomorrow. We're gonna go harvest stuff. We're gonna book ourselves a table for that tonight. Um, yeah, and then we'll see where we are tomorrow. We're gonna double check what this guy said. Because I'm sure he says Slapton Sands, but G thinks he might have said something else. But looking on Google Maps, Slapton Sands is about an hour's drive. So we'll double check what the guy said. If he does recommend Slapton Sands, we'll do it. We'll do the hour drive. No different than us driving when we go Great Yarmouth to Weybourne and all that. So yeah, we'll do it. Um, right, first day of fishing in Devon. It's gone pretty much the first day of fishing in Dorset last year. But there's still hope yet. I'm not writing a week off just yet. Right, I will see you on the next video guys when we're on Slapton Sands or whatever it's called. I will see you there. Alright guys.